Where was this one found? Eastern Montana. Hmm. All of them came from Eastern Montana. If you look back there, we have a whole bunch of skulls of marble. Oh, wow. I, I, re I read that you turned the, well, you, you raised a chicken that had a snout instead of a beak. I didn't do that. It was yeah. a different lab that did that, but yeah. it's, you know, that that is proof of concept. 43% of the population don't believe in evolution, and you can't retro-engineer an animal back to anything if evolution doesn't work. But if it does work, you can. And so it's sort of a ground proof of evolution. I mean, you can't bring back ancestral characters if there are no ancestors. So we just finished interviewing Jack Horner. Oh wait, we're, we're rolling. We're rolling. Okay, um, rolling again. He's cool. Yeah, he was very cool, very laid back, kind of... Sometimes you talk, you interview someone and they're like really, they talk a lot, they talk fast. Yeah. He was, he was a more of a slow, thoughtful talker. Yeah, he was really yeah. calming to listen to. <laughs> yeah. And, and I like his attitude. He just seems like he's having a good time. He's yeah. Just, He's trying to make a... Are we, did we say this already? He's trying to make a chicken, a dino chicken. Dino chicken. And he asked him why, and he's basically like, well, I want to have a pet dinosaur. That's <laughs> basically his reason. Yeah. Uh, and uh, kudos to him. And then got some cool footage of dino, dinos in there, in the museum. How long does it take to... What's the turnaround time on an episode Ooh. of The Good Stuff? Well, we're way ahead as far as shooting goes. So is this like months uh, away? Yes, this is this will six be six months away. No, not six. Uh, it'll be. Let's see. This is for humans versus nature. It'll probably be three, two or three months. Okay. And uh, which is probably about the time I'll be uploading this vlog. <laughs> yeah. And the episode. I don't know what it'll be called. Maybe um, will we bring back the dinosaur right, or something? But the actual once we actually start working on it, like it, it takes about probably. Uh, two, three weeks of editing and re-editing and discussing and all this stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm not the one who does it anymore for my good stuff. My good stuff crew pretty much does it all, so we're, we've, we've become a well-oiled machine. I remember the first time you and I ever met, I was like, you know, Craig's cool, but if he was well-oiled, yeah. I'd be really into this. Yeah. Uh, here you are. Look at me. Well, it's pretty, pretty hot out. I'm feeling pretty well oiled right now. Yeah. Actually, are we gonna go for a jog later? I think so. Now we don't have as much to do in the evening because yeah. this took too long. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's go for a jog. Are we gonna shoot video of that? I usually get at least a clip. All right. If I'm feeling extra crazy, I'll wear a GoPro for the whole thing. Whoa. Do like a. Have you used hyperlapse? Uh, is it the Microsoft hyperlapse? I have not. It. Uh, you feed it a long video that's not sped up, mm -hmm. um, and it uses that to figure out some basic geometry of the area that you traveled through, uh -huh. and then it maps stuff from the video onto that geometry, and then runs a camera smoothly through the whole thing. What? So that you basically get a really, really smooth time lapse, even if you were kind of bouncing around the whole way. If you imagine Google Street View as mm. you're moving through things, oh, yeah. and things kind of like fade. That sounds awesome. You, you know all the tricks. You know all, all the, the fancy, all the fancy production techniques. I just shoot stuff and then put it, throw it together. That's what I do. I maybe I should be more like you. You probably shouldn't because uh, <laughs> you produce much more content than I do. <laughs> Being all tricksy with stuff means that I put up like a video a year. Yeah, but that video is very special. Well, I hope so. And I'd say maybe 60% of what I do is crap. No, no. I like everything that I do, but I don't know if everyone does. I mean, if we're being honest, real talk for a second. Okay. Um, On video, though. Yes. Okay. Uh, I will sometimes go and look at what other daily vloggers upload, uh -huh. and I'm like, what I did, what I do, is way cooler than this. <laughs> Why does this have 800,000 views and mine yeah. has 3,247? Yeah, they, it's easy to fall into that uh, attitude. Yeah. Uh, I try to avoid it. There are more people interested in just a friendly face than interested in a hyperlapse video, for instance. I think yeah. my content tends to appeal to people who are more quiet and thoughtful, um, yeah, and is not as into 
just like being wild and crazy because la 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 I'm yeah. on camera I think I like to think that my audience is the same way like I think I do have a lot of dumb jokes and humor in my videos but it generally tends to be on the side of like critiquing the norm and, yeah. and going against what is what would be a conventional thing to do and I think my audience is kind of those those people you know, I mean, I'm, I'm still hoping that someday I can build an audience of 800,000 plus quiet, thoughtful people. <laughs> it's possible. No, I don't know if that's possible. Uh, maybe. If it's possible, I'll do it. Yeah. I mean, but also, if the goal is to build a large audience, if that is the only goal, then you have to make compromises in your content. You have to do things that are just to get views and to get attention. I can't speak to future Michael's thoughts and feelings, but yeah. right now at least, I'm not ready to compromise. Yeah, well, and I think that, that I respect you more for it. <laughs> so. I'm basically trying to turn my life into the Truman Show. That's what all daily vloggers do. Except I'm more in control of yeah, what gets edited, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I like to get really intense with the production value, mm -hmm. but I wonder if I'm just showing myself that that's unsustainable over time because I keep getting behind. And I imagine if if the viewers could choose between having uh, a vlog every day or having it be behind, but the video quality is like two percent better, mm -hmm. they probably just want one every day. Quality is kind of hard to quantify. So, yeah. would it be that much worse if, if you didn't have the high production value? I mean, I don't think it would be because, yeah. as seasoned creators, I think we're pretty good at working within the restrictions that we have. Mm -hmm. My problem is that I'm just like, oh, I want to increase the bounds within which I can create. Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans for um, Clone Harder? I have no specific plans, but I my, I plan on we should do it. <laughs> yeah, because Clone Hard did well too. I and went back and I watched it maybe a month ago, mm -hmm. um, and if I'm honest, I didn't like it as much as I did when it when we first did it. Really? Because um, I've gone back to rewatch it. I still like it. I don't know. I, I uh, I'm pretty critical too. Like I I mean it's one of one of the ones I'm more proud of. I think. <laughs> So thanks for bringing it down. No, no. Uh, no I'm going to be honest about it. Like, what, what, what did you I, I felt like um, it, it was like we're kind of making it up as we went along. And to me, I can feel it. I can feel in the pacing and, and the jokes that, that get said. It, it feels like it's funny to us more than it's like yeah. situationally funny. Sure. To what's happening in the thing. If we would have planned that out, I think, more and scripted it more, I think, I don't know if I would have liked it as much. <laughs> we got the whole family out for a jog. There's hey. Caitlin. Hey, Dad. And Craig. How are you enjoying your Missoula jog? It's very nice. A nice, cool evening by the river. Plus, people that I'm used to jogging around yeah. in Chicago. And I'm going at a slower, more manageable pace than I usually do.